Do you like westerns? You know, with cowboys and stuff. If so, do you like westerns mixed with horror? Then you might be at the right address with Dark Watch because the first game from High Moon Studios is mostly just that. A first person horror western shooter thing. We meet our hero Jericho Cross, an outlaw who was about to raid a train. But this train is monitored by Dark Watch. To make it short, that's a group that fights the supernatural. But the Dark Watch members do not transport money nor treasures as Jericho thought. They transport something important and actually incredibly dangerous. Towards the end of the train, he meets Cassidy Sharp, a member of Dark Watch. But without knowing what Jericho has interfered with, he blows up a save and frees Lazarus, a vampire who wants to wipe out humanity. Jericho, Cassidy and Dark Watch are attacked by Lazarus, but he flees after turning Jericho into a half-vampire, which may be his way to thank Jericho for freeing him, I guess. But now Jericho must defeat Lazarus for turning him into a half-vampire, and if he wants to keep his humanity, so he begins his journey together with Cassidy, while his vampirism slowly consumes him. But later he also becomes an official member of Dark Watch and meets Tala, a Dark Watch agent who has her own plans. Well, there is actually a predecessor to the game in form of a comic that deepens the story a little bit more, but let's stick to the game here, especially since I never read the comic. I have just summarized the story in the game, but overall it's a bit more interesting than described, especially if you know when, who and why the group Dark Watch was created. Overall though, this story is actually pretty neat, especially for a first person shooter. Almost all levels are divided into several sections and usually there is a smaller sequence to see in between, with only a few driving the story forward. Because ultimately, most sequences are just there to make Dark Watch stylish, show some action and to give the game a little bit more meat for the eye. And from that point of view, yeah, they are completely okay. During the game you can make some decisions and either go the good route with Jericho resisting his needs as a vampire or the bad route where Jericho gives in to his vampire needs. In itself this is actually a good idea but in the end it leads to little or even nothing. Because here's the thing, the only difference between the good and evil route are just the skills you get to help you beat the game as well the ultimate abilities you will get from going either one they don't have much impact on the story. Only once does the choice between good and evil have an influence on the story and it happens towards the end. If you choose the good route you get a good ending, while you get a bad one if you choose the bad route. Depending on the ending, and no I am not going to spoil it and therefore not show it, Jericho himself lifts the curse of the west or embraces the hell out of it. But honestly I think the bad ending is actually the better one, especially because it's a bittersweet revenge and Jericho turns from a badass character into a giga chad character, who is badass. The choice between good and evil also affect the last enemy you will fight after Lazarus, but again there is no difference between the two in the way they fight against you. In fact, there are only two bosses in the entire game and both have exactly the same sequence of movements, which is quite disappointing. Ok, technically there are three bosses but two of those share the same section in the game and only one of them appear depending on what you have chosen, the good or the bad. In other words, the way you defeated Lazarus is also the exact 
same way you will defeat the final boss that comes after. Yep, I spoiled it a bit in the end, but honestly it becomes quite clear from the beginning that Lazarus will be a boss, so it's no surprise. However, Darkwatch has style, it's dark, it's horror, it's cool and it allows for some awesome screenshots. Especially with the moon in the background, everything looks really badass. In other words, for the entire style of the game alone, Darkwatch absolutely deserves recognition. When Jericho joined the Darkwatch organization and got a new badass outfit, he immediately reminded me of Vampire Hunter D. But considering that the game had a lot of outside influences, it doesn't really surprise me. However, as stylish and dark as well cool as Darkwatch is, graphically it's nothing special, especially in terms of the characters themselves. I mean, the setting in the Wild West is awesome and looks really cool. The problem are the characters that could look better, especially Jericho's face looks a bit strange. This horse is my best friend though. But since I have already addressed the opponents, there is actually a decent variation and they look quite good. However, the entire game is structured like a whole series of arenas. That means, for example, you get stuck in one area and often cannot continue until you have defeated all enemies and because in such cases a lot of enemies appear repeatedly, it seems as if the opponent variation is uh, rather small. Also exactly because of this arena aspect, another problem arises which pulls Darkwatch down, and it is the fact that it becomes a bit monotonous, although the game is not exactly long. Unfortunately though, the whole thing is made even worse because the opponents are not very smart. In fact, most enemies run straight at you and that's it. The invisible skeletons and the bombers are the only ones running around in zigzag, but even then only after you have shot them once with a weaker weapon. This flying ghost made things, okay, banshees, also attack you physically, but generally only when you are near them, otherwise they will attack you from a distance. And those banshees are also a bit annoying to hit because they are constantly flying around. But on the other hand, I'm absolutely shit when it comes to first person shooters, so that might not say much, who knows. But at least they are better opponents than the snipers. The snipers only attack you from a distance and in itself that's not a problem, but they just stand there and let themselves get shot down because they don't really move away. However, what makes Darkwatch really awesome, although unfortunately there is little to see of this, are these levels where you have to ride around to chase a train. These levels are not only damn stylish, you never run out of ammunition and it's a welcome departure from the otherwise monotonous aspect of the game. There is also this vehicle here, but the thing is in incredibly strange to control because you need both analog sticks and it tends to be too sensitive to control. But if you played Halo on the original Xbox then Darkwatch will feel very familiar overall because it plays very much like it. And yes, what you are seeing is footage from the PlayStation 2 version. You aim, shoot, reload, collect weapons and so on. You have your pistols, double pistols, shotguns, snipers, rocket launchers and some more. You can use your vampire abilities to aim better and point certain things out, but you can't use them if you use a sniper, which still it's fine because you can zoom in twice with the sniper. And sure every weapon has its purpose and you can melee with any of them but at the end of the day you can use whatever up until the end. 
In addition to your weapons and vampire abilities, you also have these good and evil abilities that you can choose and unlock while playing. Unfortunately though, they have no influence of the course of the story as already mentioned. These have just as little influence, which is kind of sad actually. Because when you free these souls, or whatever the hell they are, they increase the duration of your good or evil abilities, but nothing more. However, what is absolutely strange is the jumping. Since you are a vampire, you can jump twice and then float around a bit the second time. The problem here is that the hovering itself is imprecise and often you end up hovering and landing where you don't want. This problem will get worse because if you are hovering around and hit something, usually you immediately bounce to somewhere else. The structure of the levels themselves are perfectly fine but sometimes th there are too many blockages in the way where you get stuck more often than not. And yep, that's going to get on your nerves, especially the last sections of the game before the bosses can be really annoying. You have 4 difficulty levels to choose from at the beginning and technically you can choose them as you like, as you play through the story. But there is not much to unlock, most of the things you can unlock are just concept arts, cutscenes and so on. It's nice and all, but still a new costume, new playable characters or something would have been better. For example, playing the story as Cassidy or Tala would have been cool as well. In fact, Tala was supposed to be a playable character, but I assume the executives were against it for some reason. Maybe too sexy to be playable? But seeing how there is a weird sex scene between Jericho and Tala, it's still weird that she isn't playable. Finally, in the western infused style, the music is accordingly decent, too good and very appropriate. Ok, Dark Watch certainly has a few things that could have been worked on here and there with the character designs, lack of bosses and some other things. And sure, as a pure first person shooter, Dark Watch might be standard because it doesn't do anything special with the formula, especially not if you've played Halo. And although the game is short, what makes Dark Watch stand out is its style and setting. For me, it was a very cool experience actually, and for the first game of High Moon Studios, they did a really good job overall. Supposedly, they wanted to work on Dark Watch 2 after the success of Dark Watch 1 and turn it into a series somewhat similar to Halo, but I guess since Vivendi bought High Moon Studio, and then Activision bought Vivendi, they say, nope, you are going to work on licensed games like Transformers and Deadpool. And oh yeah, you are also gonna be assistant developers for Call of Duty and Destiny while we get rid of some of your staff. Screw your little game called Dark Watch and your little dreams, they are absolutely worthless. Thus effectively killing a possibly very successful Dark Watch franchise, because as I stated, the first game was actually very successful and highly praised. I am actually sad that I didn't even know about the game until recently despite the ads for it back then. But overall, blame Activision, 